Hi, my name is Brad McConnell with Quality Assurance here at Kaiser Warren. Today, we're gonna to talk about field brazing tips and techniques to ensure leak-free and strong braze joints. Whenever brazing on Kaiser Warren equipment, our brazing standards require the following protective gear be worn. Kevlar gloves, Kevlar heat resistant sleeves, number two shaded glasses, hearing protection. Another important part of brazing is wearing cotton clothing along with steel toed boots in order to ensure your safety while brazing. Most importantly, a fire extinguisher must be kept near the area where you're brazing. Let's review some of the tools needed to ensure that you braze properly. First, you're going to need a striker, a deburring tool, a wire brush, a Schrader tool, a flashlight, a Sharpie of any color, Scotch-Brite or some type of sandpaper, a clean, dry rag, brazing rods, and a mirror. You will also need a bucket full of water and several rags. Before brazing, there are a few items you must check. Always ensure that the tanks are chained. Open the valve on the fuel tank. It should only be cracked open. Next, open the valve on the oxygen tank. After that, check all connections. Check the tip torch for tightness. There should be no play and it should be tight. Next, check the body of the torch to ensure that all connections are tight and check all connections where the hose meets the torch body. Another important rule to remember, while inspecting your hoses and torch body, if anything seems out of place or if there are any holes or tears in the hoses, immediately stop using the hoses as this may result in injury or you may injure someone else in the process. Before brazing, you must clean the surfaces you're going to braze so that you will have good metal to metal contact. Use Scotch-Brite or some high grit sandpaper to clean the outside edges of the pipe. With cleaning, you are removing any grease, oil, wax, dust, dirt, or oxides from the materials. Next, using a deburr tool, deburr any burrs which may be on the inside of the pipe. Use a wire brush to clean out the inside of the elbows. Test fit the pieces of pipe that you are to be brazing on and ensure that they go together easily. If the copper pipe does not go into the elbow or component with ease, there may be an issue. Immediately stop, check for contaminants, and check to see if the pipe is out of round. Once the outer pipe is fitted into the elbows, use a sharpie and make a plus sign on the copper piping. The point of this is to ensure that if while brazing the piping moves, when you put it back together you will ensure that it is in the same location it was before and fully seated. Position the component in a bench vise or some type of jig before brazing. Do not over tighten as it may damage the components. Another important part of the brazing process is protecting any components which may be on the lines that are being brazed. For example, expansion valves, electronic controllers, or any other type of device. Always refer to the component's manufacturer for exactly how they specify their component should be wrapped while the brazing is occurring. Ensure the component is fully wrapped, but also be mindful that too many rags may also hold heat. Another important safety consideration, when releasing pressure for rework, pressure will be released through the Schrader valve or the charging port only. Failure to release the pressure from these locations may result in injury when heat is applied to the piping. The amount of nitrogen used varies on the size of the project that you are working on. Some users will set pressure until they feel a slight flow at the exit point on the back of their hand. It's good practice to initiate flow before heating and continue to flow nitrogen until the part has completely cooled. Use a striker to light the torch. Do not use a cigarette lighter or a match or any other type of tool. Start off by adjusting the gas ratio. You want to achieve about a 2 to 1 mixture of oxygen to acetylene. The 2 to 1 ratio will give you the right flame for brazing. The reducing flame is a lower temperature flame than either an oxidizing or neutral flame, meaning that you obtain the right heat input to braze the materials, but not so excessive that you damage or weaken the piping. Some characteristics of the reducing flame is that it has a short, tight inner cone flame with wide outer feather. Though the type of flame used is user dependent, we recommend using a reducing flame. 
Always start by heating the inner tube about an inch away from the end of the fitting. With the entire heating process, you want to stay within the heating zone, which is about one inch from the joint. Keep the torch in motion while you are heating. You will want to make sure to work the flame around both sides of the tube. Continue to do this until you reach brazing temperature. You know you've reached brazing temperature when you have produced a low red glow on the piping. Once you see the red glow on the inner pipe, make one final pass of the flame at the base of the joint to expel any entrapped gas and ensure the filler rod material will flow. Now proceed to the outer tube joint and proceed to heat the fitting. Make sure to move the flame back and forth to main maintain uniformed heat. After you have gone over the inner tube of the joint with heat, begin to apply the filler rod. Some people may heat right in front of where they are placing the filler material. As you heat around the joint with the torch, be sure to follow behind or chase the flame with your filler material. Once you have completely brazed around the joint, apply a shoulder. To apply a shoulder, reduce the heat slightly by pulling back the torch tip and circle around the joint with the torch and rod. The shoulder should look like a gentle slope that fills in the area between the inner and outer pipes. The shoulder is important because it strengthens the joint and makes it easier to inspect the joint and find pinholes. After you're done brazing, shut off the torch and allow the joint to cool for 15 to 20 seconds. The joint will have a wet appearance from the filler material. Once that wet appearance is gone, place a wet rag on the joint. Be cautious though because the steam produced from the cooling joint is just as harmful as the flame itself. Once the joint has cooled and is safe to touch, use a mirror and a flashlight to examine the joint if necessary. Sometimes when brazing in tight spots, it may be hard to get full penetration on the back side of a joint. You will be inspecting the joint for a lack of filler material, cracks, pinholes, or fill appearance. When brazing is complete, always remember to shut off the valves on the torch body themselves. Next, ensure that both tanks are turned off, oxygen and fuel. Always wrap your hoses up so that they do not create a trip hazard. Finally, turn off the nitrogen. Roll the hose up so that no trip hazard is created. Overheating the piping not only reduces the strength, but also creates the potential to burn a hole in the piping, as seen here. If this occurs, you must cut the piping off and start over. Here we show an example of piping brazed with a nitrogen purge on the left and without a purge on the right. It's also equally important to remember that while brazing, proper penetration must be achieved through capillary attraction. Here you see a brazed joint cut open where maybe 25% penetration was achieved. Though it will hold pressure, we do not recommend this. In conclusion, please remember these key items when brazing. Brazing safety, using the proper brazing materials, properly preparing your joints, ensuring you have the proper nitrogen purge, achieve the right flame for brazing, heat the joint properly, apply the filler, and then inspect your joints. Thank you everyone for checking out the video. I hope everybody learned some good tips and techniques for brazing today. And remember, quality is everyone's responsibility.